Hello fellow sim racers, and welcome to part 4 of this sim racing setup guide. In this video we're going to be talking about anti-roll bars. If you've not seen the first three parts then a link to a playlist containing all of my setup videos should be in the top right hand corner of your screen. An anti-roll bar is essentially a big torsion spring that connects the suspension on one side of the car to the other. And they do exactly what the name suggests, they resist chassis roll. The key thing to note here is that these springs only resist lateral movement, also known as roll, but they're not affected by the pitch or front to back movement of the chassis. It may be oversimplifying it, but it can be helpful to think of anti-roll bars as suspension springs that only really affect the car during corners. And because racing cars generally have both front and rear anti-roll bars, they're a powerful tool to alter the front to rear balance of the car. Now. We've covered balance in the first video, but it's worth repeating again here. If the tyres at the front of the car have more grip than the tyres at the rear, then the car will want to oversteer when it's driven on the limit. And the opposite's true. If you have less grip in the front than the rear, then you're going to be living with a healthy dose of understeer. The relationship between the grip levels of the front and rear tyres is commonly referred to the balance of grip, or simply just balance. Now, the stiffness of your suspension setup has a huge impact on grip and, generally speaking, the softer the car is sprung, the more grip it has, though there are huge downsides to overly soft suspension, which we'll cover in video 5. However, because we can easily tweak how stiff the front and rear of the car is during corners using the anti-roll bars, we can change the balance of grip very easily. This is why anti-roll bars are usually one of the first things that get adjusted to help improve the balance of a car. Small changes in anti-roll bar stiffness can have a huge impact on handling. For example, if you find that your car is understeering, you can soften the front anti-roll bar to correct that. Conversely, if you stiffen the front anti-roll bar, you'll induce more understeer, which may be desirable in a more twitchy car. Many race cars allow you to tune both the front and rear anti-roll bars, and it's important to know what impact these changes have. Because the front tyres are usually under more load than the rears during turn-in, the front anti-roll bar has a lot of impact on your car's behaviour during the turn-in phase. So, if you're experiencing boat-like understeer when you go into corners, consider softening the front anti-roll bar. Or, if your car is over-rotating as you turn in, add some stiffness to induce a little understeer. While the front end does a lot of the hard work during turn-in, the rear picks up the slack as you start to accelerate from the apex towards the corner exit. As you accelerate, the weight distribution shifts towards the rear of the car, and so does the balance of grip. So it stands to reason that changes you make to the rear anti-roll bar will have more impact mid to late corner. If you experience a car that understeers on the power at the exit of a corner, consider stiffening the rear anti-roll bar, which will induce oversteer on corner exit. Conversely, if you have a car that's very oversteery when you power out of corners, you can soften the rear anti-roll bar. Once you have your tyre pressures and temperatures in the right operating range, adjusting the anti-roll bars is often the first port of call when altering a car setup. By softening either of the car's anti-roll bars, you can provide more grip to that end of the vehicle, and thereby alter the balance of the car. A car with more grip in the front will tend to oversteer, and one with more grip in the rear will understeer. And, as with everything, it's about finding the right compromise. In the next video, we're going to talk about springs and how they impact handling, and why using different spring settings for different tracks is really important. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did then it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you think the video will be helpful for others then please consider sharing it. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching, it is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is, goodbye, thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.